welcome to another edition of Tampa Bay Insiders, where we get to talk to some of the movers and shakers in town and find out a bit about them and where they think this we should be focused and so forth. And today we have with us uh, Board of County Commissioner Kevin Beckner. Uh, welcome, Kevin. Thanks, Louise. So glad you could be here with it's us my today. My pleasure. So we want to know a bunch about you. Uh, you've been commissioner only now, how many, is it? Eight months. Eight months. Making a lot of progress, too, I see. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. I want to get to your background. You're not a native? No, actually, I grew up in the Chicagoland area in a town in Indiana called Michigan City, Indiana. And uh, grew up there, went to Indiana University. And then when I graduated Indiana University, moved to Illinois and lived in the Downer, Downers Grove area for a period of time. And then about 11 years ago, moved down here to Florida. When you were, uh, so was this a small town you grew up in? It's about 36, 40,000 people. So pretty it's, it's a pretty, it's a small blue collar town. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when you went to uh, the university, what were you studying? Business and actually, well, business psychology and I majored in criminal justice. So at the time when I went to the university, my thought were, it was, it was twofold. Number one, either I wanted to go into business or I wanted to go into law enforcement. So when I went to IU, I, I picked up all the different concentrations that could, would prepare me for either or, and uh, actually became a police officer from- When you got out of school? You no, actually out? while I was in school, I was okay. a police officer from 1990 to 1993. And then after graduated, decided, uh, you know, I had to choose between business or law enforcement and uh, love the business background. I've owned a small businesses my whole entire life and decided, you know what, I'm going to go down the business trail. So I saw that you owned music entertainment, something. What, what was that? I did musical entertainment. We hired out entertainers. I was an entertainer myself. And so we, uh, for Instrument, part... Instrument, singer, comedian, what? No, actually disc jockey services. Okay. So uh, I did disc jockeying on the side and then again hired those types of people out as well as did the entertainment. And um, that's what I did uh, growing up. That's one of the, my biggest businesses that I had when I started and uh, just kind of blossomed when I got through college as well. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I enjoyed what I did and loved the business aspect and loved law enforcement too. And I just had to make a decision which way I was going to go. So after you were in the entertainment business, <clears throat> you decided to go into financial planning. Is that close to when you, well, what happened when did you do some other businesses in between? Yeah, when I, when I actually, when I graduated from school, um, part of my main core of my business was in the karaoke business. So we ended up um, establishing a mail order catalog company um, with a, a gentleman from Illinois. And then actually his family and I, we moved down to Florida and that would, that's what brought me down to Florida. And then that's a it. karaoke company. Yeah, yeah we distributed yeah. singer song tracks. And uh, I also, you know, I was a singer myself. So I enjoyed uh, entertaining and I added that to part of my music business. And that's what really made it flourish. And we have to let our producers here know that they could <laughs> put you on our entertainment shows then. I don't know why they're talking politics with you when they should be talking uh, entertainment. Okay, so you were singing and doing all this. Yeah. Moved down to Florida because... Moved down to Florida to move the mail order catalog business here, and then that got bought out by a manufacturer. And then after that, then I was deciding what I wanted to do. And when you grew up. When I grew up, and I'm still growing up, by the yeah, way. Yeah, aren't we all? And so uh, I decided what I wanted to do, and I actually had hired a financial advisor to help me with my business and also my personal goals that I had uh, throughout life. And then uh, from there, when I was talking to my financial advisor about where I was going to go, what I was going to do next, he said, well, you know what? You love financial planning. You loved what we did for you. So why don't you consider that making your career? And he said, you studied you know, finances as part of your business background in college. And he says, why don't you give that a shot? So I interviewed with a number of companies. and and ended up uh, choosing with American Express Financial Advisors, which is now Ameriprise Financial, and that's kind of how I got in the financial planning business. So you did that for what period of time? Actually, Are you I'm, still doing I'm still, I still have a scaled back practice that I work with now, and it's going on uh, a little over 10 years. And is there some specific uh, area you're involved in? Is that insurance or all sorts of planning? We do comprehensive life planning. So we focus on the individual individual's life's goals. So we would work with you, for instance, on establishing what your goals are for short term, lower term, or longer term, and, and what you want to do uh, 
you know, later on in life, and then we help you set up those goals and help you achieve those goals. And I'm uh, just hoping Medicare will be there for me <laughs> next year or something. I'm so, getting that close to it. So, so we, uh, yeah. we look at this comprehensive life planning right. is what we okay. do for individuals. So then, so then here you are. You're down here doing that, and you decide to run for office against, of all things, an incumbent, which, you know, is no easy thing to do for anyone. Um, what made you want to be involved in uh, the political arena? Well, when I came down here uh, and, I was, and I started paying attention, uh, the direction that um, our government was going, in particular our county government, I started hearing the news a lot, uh, where a lot of the focus seems to have been on issues that really weren't part of the real quality of life issues that needed to be addressed. And part of my business and financial background, as I started to see the, the trail that our, that our county was going on, I said, you know what, I don't think that we're really on track for where we need to be longer term. You know, there's so many important issues that, that we're not addressing, like longer term transportation needs. Take a look at, uh, you know, always heard about the sprawl in the county and the lack of growth management. And I started going through some of the comprehensive plans and looked at how, the, how things were being planned. And I became very dissatisfied with the direction and, again, the things that we were focused on. So I got tired of sitting on the sidelines and complaining like everybody else and I said, you know what, I can do one or two things. I can continue to complain or I can get actively involved uh, to make a difference. So I consulted with a number of people as far as how I can make a difference in our community. And they continuously said, Kevin, if you want to really make a difference, you've got to be in a position where you can help make major decisions. And they said, you should consider running for office. So we looked at all the different offices that I should run for, and they said, you know what, county, if you're really interested in county government and you really want to have an impact on the county, then you should consider running for the county commission. And so, you ran in a county-wide seat. Correct. Even a bigger deal and a more costly proposition and a more difficult proposition than running in just one of the districts. Right. I, I looked at, I wanted to work on some of the more global county issues like transportation, like growth management. Um, yes, we deal with specific district issues as a countywide uh, commissioner, but I wanted to have a more global impact on the county. So I wanted to work on some of those, lar la those larger scope, longer term issues. And so that's why I decided to run countywide. So, uh, but you, just before you started doing that, I noticed from either your website or some resume or something in here, that you are already getting involved in the community, in, in uh, Leadership Tampa and these and various other groups, correct? Correct. I was part of Leadership Tampa Bay, and that also added a lot of inspiration for me because I'm part of Leadership Tampa Bay. What you do is you get to go around to, to the regional, to the different counties, and take a look how they're running their government, what's working, what's not. Um, we spent time in Tallahassee, and as I started becoming involved and started seeing the really opportunities and what we could do here in Hillsborough County, that gave me a lot of inspiration and a lot of, a lot of uh, additional support to run for office as well. So you had a heck of a time with that race, though, did you not? It was definitely a challenging race, mm -hmm. and getting involved, is, is, although I talked with many consultants, uh, one of the things that you're never prepared for, um, you know, is, is until you actually run for office, people tell you how it's going to be, what you need to do, uh, the amount of money that you need to raise, and um, the support that you need to garner for it. It never really hits you until you actually have to do it. And so we did everything on a grassroots basis. Um, I didn't come in with any pre preconceived notions as far as a, an agenda. Um, but my main thing I wanted to make sure that we did was reconnect the priorities of the people back with government. So make sure the government and the people were on the same page. Did you do a lot of door knocking yes. and running around neighborhoods? How much did you do, would you say, every week for a year? About, well, our whole campaign started, we launched in January of 2007 and ran for about 22 months. So every weekend we were out there knocking doors. We were at community all events. All over this county. All over this huge. county. Yes. Yeah. I, okay. we, we put together a grassroots campaign of about 400 volunteers. So there was a lot of people that got involved uh, to, to help us spread out the message that we were trying to communicate with people. 400 people knocking on doors every, what, Saturday or Sunday? Saturdays, Sundays. We also had schedules throughout the week. Uh, we had all, we, we went to the state fair. We went to all sorts of different public events. And uh, we even participated in the primary elections for the president. And like I said, whoever we could talk to and we could um, communicate our message and get their feedback and input, you know, we were out there just talking. And it's a lot of shoe leather that we were out going throughout this campaign. I guess that's a uh, sort of a 
almost like a recommendation to somebody who might be watching this who's actually got just a glimmer in their mind of how would I run because that did take a considerable amount of money and you didn't have name recognition. Correct. And, and as I tell people that are considering to run for office, the first thing that you have to ask yourself is why do I, why do I want to run for office? A lot of times people talk about issues. You know, maybe they want to lower taxes, they want to work on this, they want to work on that. Right. But that's not what supports your motivation. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of drive. And I can tell you that we spent a lot of nights, I'd come home 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, you plop yourself in bed and at the end of the day you're saying, why in the world did I ever decide to do this? And then you remember, you know what, this is about wanting to make a difference in the community, that you want to have a positive impact and the legacy and the footprints that you want to leave for others, not only today but also tomorrow. So there's got to be, you have to first figure out why is it that you want to run for office and then you have to have a passion to do that. And if it isn't strong enough, I don't think it could sustain you through what you're just saying. Cause it can be awfully... Um difficult running around this county it's big that's one but two we have a lot of heat right i mean it's, <laughs> it's hot here it's not like okay let's go for a spring walk uh, we what, what do we end up with like two weeks of spring the whole year anyway i mean you know it's just this is a difficult task to have taken on so you really had a commitment to to want to make a change. It's yeah. the long-term vision that I have and we know that change doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of effort and you know it's not just myself, it's my other colleagues that help make change happen in the county but um, I always believe you know it's, if it's up to, if it's to be, it's up to me and so if you really want to, you want to promote change, it's got to start with you. And you know I think there, there were, and for a long time there have been su there's been such disenchantment with uh, our representation on the county commission. <clears throat> Some of the folks that have been there way too long, for example, and you know, we just want things to move along. Of course, uh, people who are, um, you know, uh, aficionados and supporters of public access weren't too fond of the commission we had either because they voted to get rid of our contract. We had trouble with them a few times. I don't think they could fully comprehend the importance of this First Amendment. Uh, you know, venue and how we needed to give that to folks. Now that you've been in it for eight months, what what do you see still? Well, I know transportation's mm -hmm. going to forever be an issue right. down here. I, I don't know even. I, I can't wrap my arms around how you figure it out when we are. We have two or three downtowns. We have you know, it's just crazy. We have a wonderful airport, but we have a downtown, a West Shore downtown, and now we have even a new Tampa area downtown. And, you know, connecting all these dots and everybody's so dependent on cars, do you see that ever going to that there'll be something that'll help uh, with mass trans? Oh, I definitely think so. And there's not just one thing that will, will be the silver bullet to this issue. You, you, know, you hit it on point. You talked about connectivity. And that's part of my vision that I have. We have to be able to interconnect on a couple different levels, first regionally and then also locally. So we're looking at, you first start on, if you look on a regional basis, how can we interconnect our other counties that we have together? Because I look at it that every county and every area has something tremendous to offer to, to others as well. So when we address transportation, we have to first start on a larger scale, look at it from well, didn't a regional. did even uh, Disney uh, wanting to do something with the rest of the state so that, well, of course, because they have a lot to gain by, you know, rail being, uh, you know, easy to use to get to Orlando. And then wasn't there talk about Orlando to Miami or Orlando to Tampa to Miami or that kind of thing? Well, believe it or not, back in the very, uh, around 72, 73, really on the early, uh, in the early stages of life of, of the Walt Disney World in Orlando, there, right? Walt Disney had a vision of connecting Disney World with all the way down to Miami. So he, and he was willing to pay for that leg to, to provide that type of a high-speed rail transportation, similar to what the monorail is, is today in Orlando. Orlando, but on a much larger scale. And of course, the legislatures at that time, the government laughed at him because he said, you know, we are, we, there's no need to have that type of connection. And of course, they looked at it as, as just self-interest only and that, um, you know, he, all, he was only in it for his self-interest. And of course, Disney World was going to profit from it. But what they didn't realize, if we would have had that connection today, what we would have been able to do with the local commerce and how that would have helped the economy and also transportation, so many other issues today. So one thing that Walt Disney had that so many people that get involved with government lack is vision, long-term vision. 
many times you will find that politicians will focus on a short term. They're, all they care about is the four years. What do we have to do in the next four years to, to uh, seek re-election or to, to uh, f uh, fulfill some type of a short term uh, problem? And they're not focused on the long term vision of the future. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm focused on is longer term vision. We've got a lot of short term issues that we need to address. But more importantly, we have to look well into the future to address not only the needs today, but the needs of our future generations as well. You see that not only uh, locally, but you see that statewide and, uh, and nationally. Yes. It's very, uh, and maybe that's because you're, you're trying to put so many fires out all day, you can hardly get to that, or you just don't have any concept, or perhaps what you're saying is true. They don't have vision. And, and I will tell you that it can be very challenging because we get a lot of uh, calls and emails. It's, it's unbelievable the hundreds of emails that we will get from constituents, all in different types of issues. And so you have to be able to prioritize uh, the things that you get in. And some things you look at and say, you know what, this is a serious issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, I think we're very blessed in the county that we have a great staff that we can refer some of those issues to and that can, that can do some work on our behalf. I wouldn't be able to do it without the staff that we've got. Right, and you're about to lose them. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a whole other issue. <laughs> that's another story. Uh, if you don't do something to straighten that out, uh, because that, so many people rely on this uh, county. I know with, with just your uh, citizen action line, I'm just total that they would even consider getting rid of that. Which I th it takes something like 150,000 calls a year, 4,000 emails a month that does all this stuff, but they're willing to cut it. And I'm just, I think, why are you cutting that? Why don't you cut your professional memberships, your travel, your mileage, your, you know, all these things. Why are you cutting service? You know, I, I thought that we only agreed and to to give taxes to politicians because we saw that they were going to provide services mm -hmm. to us. And those seem less and less, and there seems to be now more and more costs associated with any of the services, so that you sort of don't know what it is, what is it I'm actually paying for anymore, you know? Right. Uh, that, that was probably one of the, the biggest awakenings that I got when I entered office, and certainly I didn't expect, was the number of services that we provide, services that I never even thought of. You know, when, we, when I looked through and rolled out the whole matrix of services, I said, I can't even believe that we do some of these things as government. Not that it's a bad thing that we're doing, but I said, I had no clue that, we, that those services were provided for and paid for by government. And I think that's one thing that we've found over time is that as citizens here, we've gotten really used to a lot of services that we have taken for granted over time. And now that we're getting into these tough budget times, you know, some of these services, we're going to have to be making some very difficult choices because we can no longer continue as a government to pay for every single thing from our ad valorem tax dollars. We're going to have to make some choices. Well, Avalorum only ever paid a percentage of our costs here. Right. I actually did a study of that once. And it's not, it's, it's used very often in arguments that politicians make. You know, hey, do you want your taxes to go up? But you're only using right. about, I think it was something like under 30% or around that number, but I'd have to check it, of the revenue that comes into the county comes from property tax. So stop saying it's all coming from property tax because... <laughs> You oh know, no! I mean, not yet, it, but but right. that's what they'll do, because there's so many fees. You know, I mean, whether it's license my dog or, you know, pay for, um, you know, a marriage license or do, you know all these different things. There's a tremendous number of fees that produce income. Or my cable bill, for example. There are, and you will be amazed at the number of services that we also provide that we have never charged for as well, that other counties and other municipalities charge for. So that's what we're going through now. We're trying to understand, because I really look at governments like a business. Uh, we are not here to make money as a government. We are here to provide, you know, first and foremost, safety for our residents and make sure that we provide um, the adequate services for, for our children and for families. But but you know, we've gotten to the point where we can't do everything. So we're going to have to start prioritizing what, we're gonna, what services we're going to be able to, to provide. And then we have to make the decision, are we charging an appropriate amount for those services? Or first start saying, should we charge anything for those services? Or should that be something that government does? Should we charge something for those services? And what should we charge for? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to determine, because there's I've many. I've seen a few people suggest that instead of 
because you're in this quagmire of the budget right now. But right. Instead of just taking a budget that you've had around that got added to and subtracted from, throw it away and start with this point that you're making, which is like almost zero-based budgeting. You know, what kind of, just leave this budget out. What kind of services did we want to provide? How much will that cost? And then go from there. Well, the, well that was, that's part of the discussions that we've had because uh, Commissioner Sharp had brought this up and I've also added on to this, is, is really what is it? How do we define government? We've talked about before, you know, we want to know what is the cost of doing business with government. Well, I think first thing we need to do is define what is government to us. And that could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. What are the services that we want to provide? And once we have that defined, then we can say, okay, you know what? These are the services that we have provided, and now we have to make the decision, should we just get rid of those services? Or maybe we need to make sure that at least that uh, we're able to provide them, but we might, not, we might have to charge a, a fee, a modest fee, to have those services there. These are all the issues that we are dealing with right well, now in the I, budget. I sure I'm one of those people that don't think we should be building sports stadiums and <laughs> supporting them and everything since not everybody cares about those. I mean, I think everybody cares about children and those kinds of programs. And you could probably talk a bunch of people in a room into different services, but sports is not one of those. And, and yet, um, it's often used as this economic development myth, which it, it honestly is a myth. It doesn't really bring in anything. Besides transportation and these issues of trying to find the priorities, where else do you think we as citizens should be looking at uh, or looking, you know, to, to try to make a difference or start to wonder, you know, if there's some ideas that we have about fixing or making solutions? Immediately, um, the biggest issue, probably no surprise to the people watching and to you as well, is the budget. Okay. What I really need and the other commissioners need are to hear from people as far as what you feel are priority services. You can go to the hillsboroughcounty.org and you can take a look at the budget. Um, the administrator has proposed some, um, some cuts to different programs and to things that are there. So I would strongly urge everybody Buddy, um, and I know it takes a little bit of time to go online to look at that, but look at some of the things that might be really important to you services. A good example are parks and rec services. We've gotten a lot, a lot of people very concerned, and I'm concerned as well, about the uh, cuts that we're making, especially to our after school programs. So if that's very important to you, or animal services is another one, oh the God, Consumer yes. Protection Agency. We've got also um, veteran uh, services as well that are being subject to cuts, as well as our victim assistance programs. If those programs are important to you, then what we, what we need you to do is call us, email us. Uh, next Thursday um, is our uh, next budget meeting. And so come to the public budget meetings when you see those posted. Voice your opinion. Is Be that a public hearing? It Thursday? is a public hearing. Okay. Yes. Next Thursday, that is uh, July the 16th, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you can check on our website. And there'll be another one in September, should this run uh, Yes, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have at August least a, or September. We'll have a couple more workshops open to the public and we'll be due to finalize the budget uh, late September. So there's still time for you to voice your opinion. And that's what I stress to people. I said, you've got to get involved. You've got to let us know what's important to you because after this is done, you know, don't come to us when we've already done this and say, you know what, um, you know, we're concerned about this. You know, that it might be too late after the fact. We need to hear from you right now about what's important to you and what services uh, you want to continue you want us to continue to provide. And I, I hear you that, it, and I've seen that you have uh, placed a uh, heavy emphasis on people connect, connecting with people. That was Be, part because of Because you've done uh, these breakfasts or lunches, or when I've seen some notices that you ask people to come into your office, you have open hours or... Correct. The first thing that we started when I got elected, we implemented in January, is what we call the Coffees with Kevin. That lasted the whole month of January. So every week what we had done is we went to uh, each of the four districts throughout the county just so people could get to know me and we could start talking about issues and concerns. Ongoing what we have are community office hours on the last Friday of every single month. So what you are able to do is to come out wherever I'm at. We're going to be in Plant City uh, this coming Friday. Oh, you're going to be moving around. I move around. I get the in the community. Because okay. I believe that it's our job and what we should do as commissioners, instead of requiring people to come downtown to talk to us, we should be out in the community talking to people. And that's what I've committed to. So you don't need an appointment. Um, we have it at the different libraries around the county. Um, and it's typically a couple hours, and we have it on a, on a rotation schedule. And so you can come and talk about any issues that you want. 
Um, you've got five minutes to sit down one-on-one -on -one in person with me, and I listen to your concerns. We have my aides out there. We'll take notes, and we do follow-up. So this is how we connect with residents out there. Are you getting many people? Oh, yes. Oh, we've had a tremendous response for people coming out. And it varies from district to district. Um, but we've had a lot of issues, everything from traffic calming up in the North Dale. You know, we've had so many different issues that we've been able to address simply because people come out and, and we go to them. And so we're able to hear and address their issues and concerns. And they're probably even more likely to make them more neighborhood or local to them concerns, correct? Or correct. They, right. Yeah. Less, right. less uh, I don't know, esoteric county issues, like, right? Well, we've gotten a whole variety of different issues. So it depends upon, again, the, the district that we're in. So everybody will have something different that they want to talk about. But again, this gives them an opportunity where they don't have to drive down to the county center and I come to them and it's to get one-on-one -on -one time with I me. I wish the whole audience would go out and come and see you and say, get public access back in the county budget because <laughs> it belongs there. But okay, we've got just about a minute, a minute and a half left, Kevin and I. Uh, time's gone very, very quickly, and I'm sure there's some other things that you might want to make sure are conveyed to viewers, aside from, and I think you've conveyed a lot, uh, so I, I leave it to you. Do you have some, some things that I didn't ask you about that you think we, besides transportation, or other issues that we should be talking about? Well, we could probably spend hours talking on a lot of different issues and have do that in different programs. But the most important thing I tell people, uh, Louise, is you've got to get involved with your community. Uh, you've got to get active. That's why I ran for office is because I wanted to make a difference in, in the community that I live in. And so you need to, you can't just let, say, you know what, oh, we've elected this person to office, it's up to them. No, you've got, we need to hear your voice, we need to get you involved. Um, there's so many different ways you can do it by coming down to our um, um, bi-weekly meetings that we have, sending us emails. Uh, again, when you want to voice your specific concerns, you can come out to our office hours. Uh, again, just get involved. And there's a lot of also different volunteer opportunities that we have throughout the county. They can go to hillsboroughcounty.org, uh, get involved with a citizens group. Um, there's uh, committees. There's all sorts of ways that they can get involved to make a difference in government. I really appreciate you coming down here. It's my pleasure. And talking to everybody. And we all appreciate what you're doing and trying to bring the citizenry uh, back in and have them participate. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Tampa Bay Insiders.